Hello wonderful person, welcome to What The Math. This is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about how these beautiful stars are formed and how solar systems are essentially created. But we're mostly going to focus on the early life of a star. So let's use Universe Sandbox 2 to try to recreate this early system and I'm going to show you how it happens in the beginning. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so how does star formation start? Well, usually, not always, but usually, it starts with a supernova. There's a supernova somewhere in the galaxy, and it creates a very, very large cloud of gas. And so this gas starts to kind of move around in space and clump into little chunks. It doesn't always start with a supernova, because we've actually even found stars on the outskirts of our galaxy that uh, were formed by essentially, once again, material just clumping together. So once, once this actually starts, the gas in space starts to basically kind of move around and at some point one of the uh, gas particles starts to kind of accrete into a slightly larger piece. Now this is a randomly generated asteroid called Ratutungsapi and that's what we're going to make into a star. So let's actually go into um, the add right here, add body, add rings and we're going to add a sphere surface just so you can visualize what this gas will look like. So we're going to get, make this from 1.5 to about 10 radii and uh, let's actually start uh, adding silicates at first. So here is what the actual um, surface will look like, but we're also going to do a fill here as well, just to have some inside stuff as well. So this gas starts to kind of orbit around a slightly larger piece, and eventually it obviously starts to coalesce on the inside. Now I'm going to start increasing the mass here. Let's actually go into masses of moon and add uh, maybe one mass of the moon to, to this object, and here we go. So instantly it became a relatively large piece. Now this is obviously a little bit um, accelerated in terms of how it actually happens, because this will take thousands of years for it to coalesce into a large enough piece, but basically as I keep adding more and more material, it will start growing in size. So there's our ring, it's sort of, um, oh, this is obviously gas, it sort of orbits around uh, this little piece, and it's not just a ring, it's actually a sphere of gas, and there's going to be a lot of it, and we're going to just add a bunch of other gas, like water, and um, carbon dioxide, and of course hydrogen. Now most of it will be hydrogen, hydrogen and helium, and you can kind of see that um, this object starts to basically receive a lot of these particles, um, a lot of them start falling into it, especially as it grows larger and larger in size. Now, this is a miniature model of this. Obviously, this would be like everywhere. This, the gas will be everywhere. But as this object grows larger, the gas obviously um, gets to, uh, to be attracted to this object and fall into it. So a lot of different explosions going on there. And that's because this is, this is slowly growing. It's already, uh, you can kind of see the mass growing here. It's already at four masses of the moon and getting larger and larger. So let's start adding a little bit more uh, material here. A little bit more spheres um, and possibly the mass here will be now 100 moons. Let's just do it this way. So here we go. And I'm only going to be using uh, hydrogen for now because most of the material here will very likely to be hydrogen or helium. And so this growth will be quite fast and um, unfortunately in this game sometimes this actually happens. If, you, if your object starts growing too fast, uh, it sometimes disappears. Now, this happened to me before, and I was not able to solve this, unfortunately, so I may have to actually start this from scratch, but if this happens to you, unfortunately, you can't really do anything. But anyway, so let's just remember what the mass of this object was, and also save the name. And unfortunately, the name didn't really get saved. But anyway, so let's just start from here. So imagine this is that, that object that we had before. Most of it was, of course, hydrogen. And so here we go. So this is a new object, basically still the same star. Um, it's called Antimedia. Now it's still actually not a star at all. This, as a matter of fact, cannot be even called a star. It is not even a protostar just yet. This is still a, a kind of a um, protostar-like cloud, and there's going to be quite a lot of them after the supernova. As a matter of fact, there's going to be one here, there's possibly going to be one over there, there's going to be one over there somewhere. There's going to be quite a lot of them because this is how many of the stars usually are formed after the um, supernova event. But obviously there's going to be quite a lot of gas in this particular location as well, so we're going to recreate this again by adding more and more and more of gas, both in surface and fill mode. And so this will eventually start growing larger and larger and larger. And obviously, and you can kind of see the mass increasing here, 
obviously as it acquires mass it's going to approach closer and closer to that um, mass that it needs to become an actual uh, a legit protostar and so what we're observing right now is actually called gas clumping so basically gas clumps into the center and is creating this um, kind of a central region that um, usually grows pretty fast and becomes really really hot really fast as well uh, so here as i keep adding more and more of material and let's actually just maybe add some just a little bit of silicates as well just a little bit of iron um, as we add more and more of this stuff it will obviously uh, create a larger and more hot object and as a matter of fact as um, this becomes more clumped um, the actual uh, collapsing uh, starts to accelerate as well so as this clump becomes more and more dense it actually becomes almost transparent so um, the infrared radiation the heat that escapes from here actually becomes trapped in um, in the in this gas and the pressure and the temperature on the inside starts to dramatically increase and at some point the pressure actually becomes so high that it prevents the f uh, infall of more gas as a matter of fact it sort of develops like an outer shell where no more gas is allowed to go inside and this is what we would actually call a stable protostar but we're not there just yet we still need to add quite a lot more mass so let's just keep doing this let's add a little bit more hydrogen and increase the mass even more and so here we go this will now start becoming more and more massive and at first when this protostar just kind of starts being created it only really has uh, about one percent of its final mass so here it would be only about a few masses of jupiter um, but as it continues to grow um, all of the material that is orbiting around it will eventually fall into it because obviously the mass becomes larger and attracts more and more material that orbits around it and after a few million years of this, this is when we'll start seeing the nuclear reaction on the, inside, on the inside because the hydrogen will actually reach temperature and pressure needed for it to start fusing um, and uh, creating quite a lot of energy. But we're not there just yet because we still haven't reached that, um, that particular period. We're still sort of in the period where there's a lot of sort of turbulence here, a lot of wind. And uh, most of the material from, from this direction will actually be attracted to, um, to the star. Whereas um, right here on, on top and on the bottom, because of the way that this star will be spinning or this protostar will be spinning, a lot of the material will also be thrown out. So there's going to be these two jets going up and down um, with various sort of gases and va with various sort of materials being thrown out completely and uh, these two jets will actually be with this star for several million years um, until it actually becomes a main sequence star when it really starts burning um, hydrogen and when all of this gas kind of disappears but uh, just for now let's actually just keep adding more hydrogen here and create a larger and larger object that will eventually start becoming a star so this is quite a lot of gas orbiting there and it slowly adds up to the total uh, mass of this particular star and we're slowly approaching that particular situation when it's going to actually start getting really hard and becomes a protostar. So it's kind of getting closer to it. Um, at this point, it might actually be known as the T -tori, uh, Tori star, which refers to the fact that it's going to basically have um, a hydrogen burning star with really, really strong stellar winds and um, usually have a kind of a really large disk orbiting around it, which we're going to create here as well, which will eventually turn into planets and so here is the disk that I tried to create here it's actually spinning in a slightly different direction but basically this disk will stay with this pro star for a very long time even as it grows larger and larger and eventually a lot of this material will actually get thrown out into the outer space because as soon as this becomes a main sequence star basically as soon as it starts getting uh, an actual hydrogen uh, burning reaction on the inside and as soon as it starts getting really really hot the stellar winds here will actually push out a lot of this material out of the system and as this happens only some of the material in the ring will stay and then start clumping into um, essentially planets but before this happens 
Let's take a look at the actual sort of structure and I guess just a general look of what's actually happening here. So we have a very large, relatively hot object on the inside with a lot of stellar winds. Uh, we have a lot of gas orbiting around it and we started to form this sort of ring that will turn into planets later on. But all of this is super, super thick and very, very disorganized and chaotic at first because a lot of this stuff is just orbiting everywhere. It's not actually in a flat sort of... Um, plane like we do have in our solar system right now all of this is sort of all over the place and at this point as a protostar this particular object will actually have um, a lot of luminosity it's going to be even brighter than the actual star when it becomes a main sequence star because of its size as a matter of fact here the size is uh, several times larger than what it will be when it becomes a star when it becomes a star, it sort of collapses a little bit and starts um, burning energy and becomes more compact. But at first, because of its essentially volume, um, it produces a lot more luminosity, even up to a thousand times luminosity of the actual star later on. So these objects, these protostars, are actually relatively bright and easy to see. But the thing is, these objects only last for a few million years, so they're actually quite rare in our galaxy. It's very difficult to find them, even though they're so easy to see. And generally, we call these pre-main sequence stars, also known as PMS in astronomy, which is probably not the best acronym to use, but that's what it is. And so uh, the total life of this uh, particular object will only be several million years. Usually it's about 1% of total life of the star. And these circumstellar disks, these basically disks that would later become um, protoplanets and also planets, also last for only several million years until all of these objects start coalescing into essentially um, planets. But let's just actually start increasing the mass here manually just to see what this looks like later on as this becomes closer and closer to the actual star. So all of this material will start coalescing, the actual um, ring will start becoming more flat, and the object will eventually become a star. So somewhere around 100 masses of Jupiter, this is when we'll start getting a nuclear reaction on the inside, and it becomes a main sequence star. So right now it's kind of still unstable, this is still sort of a protostar, you can see a lot of um, different explosions, that's basically the representation of stellar winds, but with time, this will eventually become more stable and stabilize into a main sequence star that we know as basically Sun today. And the ring around it will eventually coalesce into planetary bodies, which will then become planets like Earth, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. And so this is essentially how the stars are born in the beginning. And don't forget that this is just one of the stars after the supernova, but there's going to be a lot more of them uh, somewhere near, near this region as well. And this is how uh, normally uh, star formations or star clusters are formed. And this is why so many stars, like for example, Sun and Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri, actually move in the same direction because they were very likely formed from the same region from the same supernova. And if I accelerate time here, you'll see that all of this gas is still sort of attracted to the star, to the to our Intimidae star. And at some point, all of this will actually be cleared and become a very sort of a clean cut star in the middle with a protoplanetary disk orbiting around it that will eventually, of course, turn into something that looks like this. So essentially, this will be the future of the system when it actually becomes a main sequence star with a fully developed, uh, I guess you can call it adult um, planetary system. And so th these are the planets orbiting around it and the star is in the middle. And later on, of course, it will die and either become a white dwarf, a neutron star or possibly a black hole. But that's another story for another day. Anyway, hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who you think might enjoy these videos. And also, let me know what you think about this. Or better even, can you actually tell me of any protostars that you know and can possibly find online? Because there's actually not that many that we know. One of the most famous ones is called Titori. And that's a star that you can kind of see in the sky as well. But there are many, many more. If you know them, post them in the description or sorry, in the comment box below. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye bye. And what we're going to do is let's actually increase this mass just a little bit more to make this a more funky system. Let's change the orbits a little bit, making them a little bit more elliptical and see how they interact with one another if our star gains a little bit of mass. And that's actually a pretty good looking system that I've created. I really like this. 
even though most of the planets have very elliptical orbits and are orbiting in such a way that they're probably going to collide with one another at some point. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.